No, he was saying, well, the very language here is the language used with the FDIC, and we want to grant them this type of discretion. I recall as the ranking member of that subcommittee, it wasn't all that long ago, we had a hearing regarding what I believe the gentleman thought was an ab of that discretion, uh, dealing with a bank, FBOP, that I believe was in his district, so perhaps the FDIC discretion is not all that it's cracked up to be. And, and I would say that ultimately, many of us believe there is a fundamental difference between ensuring kind of the plain vanilla deposits of those at Bailey Savings and Loan and creating the equivalent of deposit insurance uh, for the uh, CDOs and the CDSs and other uh, derivatives of the Goldman Sachses and the Morgan Stanleys of the world. Uh, again, the question isn't, why are you rejecting the FDIC? The real question is, why are you trying to give the equivalent of deposit insurance to these types of Wall Street firms? We frankly see that fundamentally there is a difference. On something. The other thing I would say about the discretion that the FDIC here has, and this isn't a Sheila Bear issue. I may not have seen I have the greatest respect for the chair of the FDIC. I mean, this legislation is going to go beyond her. But the bottom line is you are still granting discretion that as long as they can look themselves in the mirror and say we're going to treat creditors differently because we believe it will maximize the value of the assets of the covered financial company, well, that's a pretty big hole that people can drive through. Again, I think it's reminiscent, again, of what we saw in the Chrysler and GM restructurings. So we're going to grant the ability of the FDIC to have this huge pot of money. And again, I that didn't get a clear answer on exactly what that money was going to be used for in the bailout fund. But we know how it was used in Chrysler and GM. We know, again, that in Chrysler, secured creditors got 29 cents on the dollar, and the UAW pension fund unsecured, unsecured creditor, got 43 cents on the dollar. Let's look at the equity. The UAW ended up with 55% of the equity of the new Chrysler. Once again, it's not a death panel. It's a resurrection panel that plays favorites, picks winners and losers. Here's a good one. Fiat got 20%, who I don't even believe was a creditor, an additional 15% if they can manufacture, I believe it was a car that got 40 miles to the gallon. Now, we can certainly have a debate. I suppose that's more of the uh, jurisdiction of energy and commerce when we talk about whether or not we need small, more efficient vehicles. But why that would be handed over to... Uh, fiat is somewhat beyond me, but the point is, I have no doubt uh, that um, uh, the administration, when they put this plan together, looked themselves in the mirror and said, you know what, we need to cut a special deal with the UAW because guess what, no UAW, well, we can't have an ongoing firm, we can't have an ongoing GM, we can't have an ongoing Chrysler, I'm sure they justified it that way. Now, I'm not sure who living in Detroit would voluntarily leave a paycheck, but I suppose that was a part of the rationale. And so, again, this is just another facet, uh, I believe, where, unfortunately, crony capitalism could be employed. Uh, I reject this amount of discretion in dealing with, again, uh, either the creditors or the counterparties of the Morgan Stanleys and the Goldman Sachses of the world. I do not believe in the parallel to the FDIC. And we know under any facet of crony capitalism, your economic future depends less on how you perform your job at home and more on who you know in Washington. What it means is that firms' profit depends less on how they compete in the marketplace and more how they compete in the halls of Congress. Uh, and we're seeing uh, the vanguard of that today, and the result is the highest unemployment rate uh, in a generation, uh, and, uh, uh, an economy that is still stagnant when it comes to jobs. We do not need any invitation for crony capitalism in the underlying language allowed. Gentlemen's time has expired. Is there further debate? If not, the question is on the amendment. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Opposed, no. No, the no's have it. The clerk will call the roll, and the vote on this is among members of the Financial Services Committee and the Judiciary Committee. The clerk will call the roll.